All right. Hello out there in Packer Nation, and welcome to another edition of the Absolute Packer Podcast. We are on episode 77, which I've named The Bears Still Suck Part 2, because I told you they were going to suck again. First, The first uh, iteration of this was part one. This is part two. I was hemming and hawing about naming it. The Super Bowl goes through Lambeau, blah, 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 blah. But you can always go back to the uh, tried and true. The Bears still suck because they definitely do. Um, so I am Andrew Hetzel. And with me, as always, is Jeremy Houchler, Elliot Christensen. What's up, boys? What's up? Def- Number one. Definitely not as good as Elliot because he gets to celebrate yeah, no this kidding. in Florida. Yeah, yeah, must be nice. You got to go to the science. You got to you got to infiltrate the Scientology building, though. <laughs> how do you know that? How do you know that I didn't? Yeah, did you measure the life force? I want pictures. I mean, I but I'm not allowed to take pictures and give them to you. Steal you find find the Commodore head. Steal it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back on track once again. So, in case people just tuned in, there was a football game. Uh, the Green Bay Packers dispatched of the Chicago Bears in. A very much, uh, I would call it a must win because we wanted to get that number one seed throughout the playoffs. Um, I mean, the Packers won the NFC North and they were they were definitely obviously already in the playoffs. But uh, it came down to week 17 against the bitter division rival. And, you know, I would say at the beginning of the game, the Packers looked like they were going to blow them out. And then it kind of hemmed and hawed a little bit. The third quarter was really, I don't know, it was kind of forgetful, I guess, to say the least. But then they turned on the Jets in the fourth, and they, they buried it. It was 34 to 16. Did I get that right? 35. 16. 35. Dang it. Saw them short. 35 to 16. Um, I mean, this game, to be honest with you, until the third quarter, it felt like it should have been 48 to nothing. Um, you know, it was – it kind of just had this feeling of being closer than it should have been, even though it never really completely felt like it was out of reach. But, you know, look, you guys even said in the chat, let's just celebrate. So. Um, my notes are pretty short. As a matter of fact, my notes only have two things in them. I go, there's not much else to say. There are two empirical facts. Number one, the Bears still suck. And number two, <laughs> the Packers secured the number one overall seed, which means the road to the Super Bowl goes through Lambeau Field. So tell you what, um, they got all, you know all their goals to this point they, they've achieved. Um I mean, they're they're playing well. The defense is playing better, and the defense was put in some funky uh, situations today. I mean, could they have played better overall? Yeah, I suppose, but still, considering I think the Bears came ready to play. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, this was a huge game for the Bears. They they ended up. I now correct me if I'm wrong. They still got in the playoffs, even though they, they did. Lost. They're number seven seed. Uh, yeah, number seven, seven seed. seed. I you know I wouldn't say they're very dangerous, but look, you never know. Dance, you just never know. I mean, look it. Now is not the time you're going to take anybody lightly, period, end of story. But, um, uh, yeah, um, what can you say? I mean, the goal of any team is to play 16 games, get in the playoffs. Um, doesn't matter whether you're 8-8, eight 7-9, eight, and nine, 6 and 10. I mean, <laughs> you know, how the NFC East six shapes out. Ten. How That's the NFC kidding. East shapes out after tonight's game against uh, Washington and Philadelphia. But, uh-huh. like, you know, we, we get back to it, and um, I, I think back to our podcast last year, after we lost to San Francisco, we were just like, we need a game at Lambeau. We need to get the playoffs through Lambeau. We need to dominate the regular season, you know, at least get that number one seed. And we did all of that. And I'm eternally grateful for all of that because like you said, Andy, many times we haven't played an NFC championship game here since 2008. So, and that was before Madness. that was before Rogers. That was far last game as a Packer. As exactly. So, oh, yeah. you know, um, Everything that we could have asked for, we we got it, and we've earned it. You know, we literally earned this whole this whole kit and caboodle because um, it was a it was a trial and tribulation kind of a season. You know, I mean, there were many games where we didn't think that they were going to win, or you know, we didn't we 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 all kind of went on the the bandwagon that they don't look good enough to win, and they did. You know, and that's all that we have to uh, be happy for. Um, and you know. Uh, a I, black cat just crossed my path. That's good luck, right? Oh, <laughs> Elliot, I'm going to let you take that one. I, I think you crossed the black cat's path. <laughs> I like it. Beauty, it's, it's all nice. in the eyes of the beholder. Everything, everything's a perception, right? Nice. Um, nice. Yeah, you know, I got to say, you know, now that the regular season's over and we, we've achieved the goals that we want to get right now, 
You know, if you would have told me last year after the pasting by the 49ers in the NFC Championship game, which was in San Francisco, that we would be 13-3 and three again and actually have a better playoff seeding, I would have said you're crazy. Um, so, you know, with that said, I think we can safely say, look, before I, I get into this, Aaron Rodgers won the MVP tonight. Patrick Mahomes didn't play. Um, so that allowed Rodgers to come in and he threw for four touchdowns. And, he, you know, the one thing that I did think was kind of funky in this, he had three throws that could have been picked in this game. They were kind of very uncharacteristic. They weren't, you know, but it was, I was surprised by that. But nonetheless, he had four touchdowns. So he ended the season, did I get this right, 47? Or did he hit Devontae for 48? I I can't even remember now. But I, look, he broke his own record for touchdowns. Um, so he, he won the MVP. How many TDs did he have today? Four? Yep. He had, so he has 48. Three in the first half, and then he threw the slant to Devontae late. Yeah, he had 44 coming in, so he's got 48. 48. Madness, man. Um, and he, sh- and he should have obliterated the, or not obliterated, but he should have beaten his passer rating, uh, which he took he, in 2011. He didn't get it. He didn't? He was, he was one point below. Oh. 121.5, yeah. Oh, son of a bitch. Well, when you say obliterate, I mean, I think it would have been, it was an NFL record back then. But, um, I mean, one <laughs> point. Yeah, we're talking about splitting hairs. Um, but 48 touchdowns to five picks. And yep. it, it just, I'm, I'm kind of hopping around here, but as I, as I think about it, so Devontae Adams caught a touchdown. He tied Sterling Sharp's record. I thought he broke it. I thought Sterling Sharp's single season record was 17, but it was 18, so he tied it. But again, we're kind of splitting hairs. It's like he was great, but was it great, great? I mean, just what Devontae, oh boy. Um I don't know. Um it's it's pretty crazy. Well, just think about what we overcame this game. I mean, I think I, I texted you guys at halftime. They pretty much doubled our total plays. Um, they were 30, yeah, the, the, 36 to 21. Stats wise. Um, yeah, they had 36 plays to our 21, and we were still in the lead. Um, the crazy stat is that they went for fourth down, or they went for it on fourth down six times and converted and they got five it. of them. So I know. I mean, here's the thing like everything, if you, if you look at the statistical um, stat sheet of the game, you would think that we would have lost. Yeah, but we won in a convincing fashion. Yeah. So, you know what? That's all that matters in the end is that you win. Like, no and they did. You know, I mean, we said if you looked at those stats, and, you'd be like, "What the hell?" And then you look at who's playing quarterback, you go, "Oh, <laughs> well, and, right." And you Trubisky. know, I, And did he seal his fate now in Chicago? I don't know. You know, I mean, he definitely didn't help in the second half. You know, trying to o- overcome us. Um, Man alive! And that was the difference in the game right there was the offensive execution. Uh, we were pretty stellar in that regard, and they were really, 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 really bad when it came Save to get- for the third quarter. They they didn't score any. They scored three points. That's true. I mean, the defense. You talk about Ben, but not right. break. They 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 bent, but they didn't break. But right, and that's all you can ask. I mean, you know, we we've said that this is an imperfect team, and it's definitely an imperfect defense. And they they gave us everything that we needed to win the game. Yeah, well, and I mean, they dro- we dropped thirty five on them. And their at their place, mm-hmm. and we should have been more because MVS dropped a wide open bomb touchdown. So, but again, I mean, I'm doing all this nitpicking here. I'm, I'm trying to head, sit back at the beginning of the year, and you know, to where we are now, and especially like like um, with with Rogers and Lafleur's not going to win Coach of the Year. Um, I haven't really seen him talked about anywhere. But what coach has started off his coaching career as head coach? Back to back, thirteen win seasons, and he hasn't lost two games in a row. He hasn't lost more than one game in a row. That's crazy. Now he's got where I was kind of going with this for. He's got Aaron Rodgers. That that helps a lot. But Mike McCarthy had Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> and um, towards the end, he really didn't know what to do with him. Um, so it's looking back. I think the hiring of Lafleur was definitely you can't argue it. Look, you could maybe say after one season, mm, let's see what happens or whatever. But it's sorry that that was a pretty darn good hire. Uh, I would even go above that and say it was an excellent hire. I mean, he um, everything that has come to this team, he has overcame those uh, doubts that anybody has ever had. 
um, except for maybe the defense, of course, but um, the special teams maybe. But I mean, you know, um, I I wrote a blog before the season began. I had them go to eleven and five and lose it in the wild cut round. Um, so I, I didn't expect them to be any better than they were last year, and they came out better because now the playoffs come through Lambo. And if we lose at Lambeau, then that's going to be on us. But right now, everybody's got to come here and 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 uh, brave the cold and the chill and the snow. Come here, come here, everybody. <laughs> this is where you got to come and get I, it. This is and where I you think come and get you know. It. I think I I became a believer in that. I think there really is a home field advantage. Number one, because only one team gets a bye this year in each conference. Um, and number two. I mean, I don't, they didn't run AJ Dillon a whole lot tonight, but whatever. Um, but you would think it's right for AJ Dillon and a guy like that to break out. And man, they haven't had his fresh legs rookie bowling ball running back um, at Lambeau Field. I think they, and you just look at their weapons. Man. Why right. do you suppose they didn't play him more? Because I think, I think they three. knew they could pass and they passed. Yeah, I mean they were look, they were torching them pretty good. I think that's part of it. Um Jamal Williams came back too. I mean, as I sit here just thinking about it out loud, I think that's a part of it. Um you know, it's kind of like there was an element of truth in that they had to I don't want to say they're forced, but in a way they were forced to use AJ Dillon more because Jamal Williams wasn't there. So in a way it's kind of like it I think there was something to that. But look, if anything, with AJ Dillon, they know what he what he can do now, you know. So that was kind of at worst, it was a blessing in disguise, right? That and yeah, right, it was. He's kind of like in their back pocket. Their offense is already pretty sick, and if they get it at home at Lambo and there's some funky conditions, and they're like, "We got this 200. How much does he weigh? 300 Tw- pounds? 247 <laughs> pounds. God, solid. You know, it's like, could you imagine that guy running on you in the fourth quarter? <laughs> I'd have two black guys, and he's and he's your third stringer. You and know? I was just gonna say that you know why didn't he play more today? Uh, it was a a big. There's a lot of lot of going on in the game, um, and he's their number three running back. You know, and I think that that Jamal Williams thing kind of did answer itself. You know, the right. fact that he came back because um, if if let's say for example they they had a exponential value on Dylan. He would have been on there and on third and short and, and, and the goal line situations. And he wasn't so truly he's your number three running back. And that's what they value him as right now. But like you said, that Tennessee game showed you what he cannot, he keep what he can do and what the future looks like for him, which is pretty high. I think, yeah. I mean, look, I think, to, to your guys' point, you know, the, the road of the Super Bowl goes through Lambeau. If they lose, it's it's because of what they did. You know, it's going to be on them. It's like the only thing I don't want – I even put it down. <laughs> Let me get out of there. But he wants to go back. A black cat uh, of all things, too. <laughs> well, he's a tuxedo cat, see? Oh, now you can see the tuxedo. There you go. Sometimes I call him a, a, cha- a rat pack or chairman of the board. Or I've called him Dean Martin a few times. Um, <laughs> nice. now I lost my train of thought. Oh, what I was going to say is in the playoffs, um, the last thing I want to see is that they leave bullets in the gun. And if, if they're pounding their head against the wall in some game and they leave AJ Dillon collecting dust on the sidelines when it was screaming for them, him, them, him to be used, I don't want to see that. And so it's like, they have all these options and it's like, you only have, you know, so many you have one ball to go around, right? You got a lot of talented players, but at the same time, I don't, you don't want to be like, what it could have showed up. Why didn't they do this kind of a thing? You know, um, that really is the only thing from an offensive perspective. Um, now I say that, but one thing I haven't brought up at all yet, we haven't discussed was uh, David Bakhtiari. Um, man, uh, probably the best left tackle in the league. Uh, all pro just on his big extension. And God, the guy tore his ACL in practice on a non-contract drill. I mean, wasn't even I mean, touched. Yeah, I mean it. You hate to say it happens, but it happens. Um, but I would say that is the worst injury that this team has suffered in the Lafleur area, without question. Mm-hmm. Um, they've been relatively healthy the past two seasons in general, but all pro best left tackle in the league. That's something. And with that said, they the offensive line played pretty well in this game. Billy Turner at left tackle. 
a little shaky early on, um, but I think he he held up okay. Which I don't know. What did you see? Am, am I somewhat accurate? No, I I think you're very accurate. I I mean, I think going into this game, the biggest challenge for them was to keep Aaron Rodgers upright and and healthy. Uh, he only got sacked one time, I think. One sack, and he was hit six times. So I mean. Um, that that's pretty good uh, yeah. against Khalil Mack and, and yeah. Akeem Hicks and, and Robert Quinn. And Hicks was out for the first game. You're right. You're right. Back in this game. So yeah, yeah, they have some, they have some weapons up front that could have taken advantage of the, the possible weaknesses that we had on the offensive line. And, and they held up respectably uh, well enough to um, control the narrative pretty much. And that was the key to the game. It literally was, you know, because agreed. Um, yeah, you know, Turner had a, a bad hold call there on. He got uh, annihilated on one play, and that was the one where Rod somehow happen. dumped it off to, yeah. um, I mean, he got turnstile. It was like Ole. I was thinking back to his hold call, and I can't remember if we actually scored on the play or if we were close to the goal, but he had a 10-yard penalty when we were in or near the red zone uh, that negated a, a possible touchdown or a, or a, a ball on the one-yard line or something like that. Um and then it moved the ball back out, and I think we ended up scoring, I think. But, um, yeah, you know, uh, Wagner was w- held up really well. Um, inside, they held up really well. Uh, you're, you're not going to fully be able to contain the Bears' defensive line. Uh, they have some studs there. So yeah. um, to, to hold up as well as we did, I think that should give fans a, a huge glimmer of hope of going to the playoffs that, you know what, we passed one test against a very formidable defense again in the Chicago Bears. Um, you know, going into the playoffs, we should feel pretty good that they can protect Aaron and, and that they can open up holes for Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams and AJ Dillon. We shouldn't have a problem there. So, um, I felt so much better coming out of this game, knowing how they produce in this one. Yeah, I agree. Um, the one thing I was nervous of was, man, you know, if, if they started the game and he was getting whooped left and right, and they had to like literally change their offense, that would be not good. Mm-hmm. Um, but they really didn't have to change their offense at all. And, and I don't think they sent out – they might have sent out a little bit of help, but I don't. it wasn't anything noticeable where you're like, oh, they have this guy blocking and chipping every other play. Um, so as long as it, – it just it's almost like a bend but don't break, right? As long as that offensive line, the left side, can bend but not break, um, I think we'll be okay because if it gets worse than that, that's when your offense might have to change. And, you know, let's hope with this extra week – that, I mean, LaFleur's got a pretty good offense, pretty good scheme, and I I like how it's flowing, but they have an extra week to even, you know, what, I'm trying to think of like a silver lining where it's like, okay, we don't have Bakhtiari. we got to make damn sure we do this, so let's even look at this even further. It's it's almost like an excuse to deep dive even more. Oh, totally. Um, because before, what, look, when Bakhtiari's there, you're like, eh, hey, whatever, he's there. You don't, you don't have to worry about anything. So it almost forces you to have to be like, okay, you know, I and, think that could be good. And, and, it's going to be, sorry, what I'm getting at is this is LaFleur's first real test of a real big injury to a, I mean, if you look, the t- I, I would say there's the first two people you don't want to be injured on your team. Number one is quarterback. Number two, damn well could be your starting left tackle considering he's an all pro. So they didn't lose a solid starter. They lost a great, great all pro player. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I mean, we're at a time and. In the season here, where there's no excuses, we have to find a way to make it work. Um, and this game really showed that we can. You know, um, it, it, you know, I think I was the first to to message you guys when it happened that he was out, and I was just like, I was. Really, yeah, I saw that, and I was like, I was uh-huh. really down. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, of all guys, like you said, one A and one B, Rogers and Bakhtiari, they go hand in hand. Just because if you don't have Bakhtiari there, then Rogers is concerned about his backside, his blind side. You know, so I, I was really down about that. But after this game, I feel much better knowing that they can hold up against a really good um pass rush that the Bears had. Um and, and like you said, if they have to make changes, the flexibility that they have inside is tremendous. I mean, you flip, you know, Lucas Patrick, you put in uh Runyon, um, the flexibility that they have inside allow, allows them to weather this storm. You know what I mean? I mean, they're pretty darn fortunate when it comes to their line, right. you think about it. Because, they, look, they've had to shuffle it around even here or there when Corey Lindsley was out. Or I can't remember who else I'm thinking was hurt. But, um, 
they've had to kind of, and they haven't really missed a beat. So it's pretty good depth, but it's, it's obviously tested now. Um, but, you know, we, we, we look back on it and we had a good draft, you know, obviously Runyon um, looked pretty good in his limited snaps that he had this year, but did we have a good draft? We sure we'll could see. use that. Well, you know what? Here's, here's, I think we're kind of overlooking the one guy that really held this line together. And I, I was included into that. Runyon? No, Rick Wagner. I think without oh, him. Oh, okay. Without him. And he had a pretty. I That's a good point. The last time and he I, was hurt. Right. And the last time I saw his pro fo- football focus uh, pass block rating, he was like in the top 15. Um, so. You know what? And Balaga was in the top 10. So we didn't lose that much production as far as his pass block winning compared to Balaga went. So Where did Balaga go? Chargers? San Diego. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. LA. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Used to be San Diego. But, you know, I, I think that I think if there's a really a guy that really held this line together this year, I mean, Billy Turner was a pretty important. Billy Turner. Back, but really I think Billy, I think went Rick, above and beyond expectations for sure. Yeah. Because he, he was like, just okay last year. Yeah, that was like a ceiling. He was okay, but he's actually, I would say he's been above average and his utility has been the fact that you could, he was playing guard and tackle um, primarily right tackle. I think is that right? Yeah. primarily right tackle, but something but obviously played guard. So it's like, man, now's the time you don't care about that stuff until you have injuries. And then when you can plug a guy in and you can, like I said, Ben, but don't break. I think that's where, your your usefulness on the offensive line and their philosophy since Ted really Ted Thompson was to have guys that could play almost anywhere, um, and that and that was invaluable this this year. God it, yes, that's invaluable, and it's going to be as invaluable as it could possibly be right now. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I don't want to go too far off in the future or anything, but you know, let's hope that Bakhtiari is ready for the start of next season. It's late this year, but that one's going to be a tough one. That's a 10 to 12 month recovery. So we, we, we do the math. That's going to be very tough. You know what I mean? Um, but I, you know, wow. I, I look at this team as far as like trying to prognosticate, like how their playoffs look at Lambeau and considering the last game against uh, the, the Tennessee Titans, I think this team looks phenomenal uh, playing in the elements. I really do. I think everything lines up pretty well for them. And, and I think also too not having, um, David Bakhtiari and then filling him in with, uh, you know, Bill, flipping over Billy Turner, I think that kind of slows down opposing defenses in a way. Um, so I think that's going to help us. I really do. Yeah, that's another, you know, with, with Bakhtiari getting hurt, it is almost another reason why you'd want teams to come here to slow things down um, and maybe do a little bit more run blocking too versus just a ton and ton of pass blocking. So, man, you you could not set it up any better. You got everything right where you want it. And outside of Bakhtiari, you're healthy. Right. Let's let's call it what it is. Right. Um, every other team is, you know, the, the Packers, I'd say even this year in general, have been spared pretty good. Last year was ridiculous. They had like no injuries. This year, a little bit worse, but not too much worse. Every team's injured. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So, uh, just overall superlatives, I think, too. I was thinking of Devontae, Devontae Adams, man. But I'm glad we have him. <laughs> good Lord. Um, well, this is, what I was gonna, this is what I was going to say. He missed two and a half games. Remember that. He missed two and a half games. I, I think I, I, I'm going to do a little bit of extrapolating. <laughs> um, had he played all 16 games, I think there's a very legit possibility that Aaron Rodgers could have thrown for 55 or more touchdowns. Think about that. I mean, that's entirely possible. Well, and that would be an that's- astronomical feat because last year, I think he pretty much doubled his, almost doubled his output from last year. I think he only had like 26 last year. Yeah. You know, yeah. so think about- right. Pretty think- phenomenal. What's the, what's the, uh, Peyton Manning has it. I think it's like 52. Yeah, it's somewhere above 50. I don't remember exactly the number, but I think it's like, but he could have, I mean, I think I would have pegged him at 55 on the low end with almost three full games with Devontae Adams. Because he was yeah. the guy was catching multiple touchdowns every game. Let's let's, let's get in another W. <laughs> nice. Um, and then I mean he broke uh Sterling Sharp's catches record. All this He's other high. stuff is noise. It's all and he tied. I know, but hey, now's the time to kind of look at it since we don't know where our problem no, is. is and stuff like no, that. No, it is. It is. It is. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I think it's phenomenal because Sterling Sharp, Sterling Sharp was really. You want to talk uh, about a man among oh, boys? Yeah, yeah. That guy, he when, was he uh, was just probably even under like a tree at trunk. The time. I yes, yeah. very much underappreciated. Severely yeah. underrated. Um, and obviously, he got struck down by injury. It's like, yeah. And he didn't have, and he didn't have like you know an Aaron Rodgers throwing to him. He had Don Mikowski and the, right. the young, the young Brett yeah. Favre, right? You know, right, right. And you know what's interesting when you when you look at it, like okay, I still marvel at the fact that he did that in the early '90s, back when not every team threw as much, and cornerbacks could actually mug you. Still, <laughs> right? They you can, know what I mean. You could touch. It them. really was the early '90s was a different era. You could smash quarterbacks. You could smash wide receivers. Yeah, you didn't pass the ball nearly as much. So just think about that. That's <laughs> that's crazy. That's why I always, when I think about that, I'm just like that'd be like that'd be like him catching 25 today. You know, you you could almost extrapolate that out for Sterling Sharp in today's. Uh, but he was just. The guy was like Devontae Adams plus 50 pounds <laughs> and still as athletic. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I was joking with you guys about Devontae. I'm like, we're going to chuck one up to Devontae here. And the, the, they were hell bent. You could tell on that last, even though they had the game, like in the, they already had the game wrapped up. And Rodgers like, I'm going to get this in here to Devontae. And slung, it, it was just, it was like inevitable. It was Thanos. I am inevitable. Bam. Yeah. Slung well, and I did love that that last minute stop of uh, Jimmy Graham. Oh, yes. that was that was poetic and poetic. Already, Inches po- away, poetic. I had already I had already closed up our Slack, but I wanted to make sure you guys noticed that too. <laughs> oh, I so I, I put I put I, I in the Slack. I said I said LOL. Yeah, uh, yeah. something about Jimmy Graham or Jimmy Graham yeah. fail. That's what I put. Yeah, because yeah. he was like, I'll tell you what that though. Was- that was so great. Speaking of silly things, did <laughs> what you a way to up? cap off the season! <laughs> I know to deny to, to deny them him a worthless touchdown. Well, and, and, and if you, <laughs> the if you very guys, end of a game. and if you guys remember uh, when he was interviewed, you know preseason, um, he said, and, and it was I don't know if it was a knock to the Packers or whatever, but when he said this team just wants to win, I have this feeling that they just want to win more, and I was like, wait a second. I'd have been like, uh, Jim, like, here's me holding the microphone. Uh, Jimmy, want to and will, two right. different things. Jimmy, you ain't so Graham. I mean. You remember a couple of years ago, it was when Rodgers, I'll never forget this, which is funny because it was right around the time I got sick, but I won't forget this. Um, <laughs> uh, Rodgers, they, you know, he had come off like the uh, seven and nine season with, or was it seven and nine? The last one with McCarthy when he got fired? Six, nine and one. And the Bears won the division, right? Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, Mitch Trubisky is going to take over the NFC North. He's better quarterback than Aaron. And I remember that whole narrative, and I'm going, just, just stop. Just stop. Brutal. It's painful. Brutal. Just worship 1985. Right. <laughs> and the Super Bowl shuffle. <laughs> you can have it sh- all. <laughs> oh, my God. I showed somebody at, at uh, the place I worked for it in Slack. I was like, hey. Because I work with a bunch of young people, and I mean, like, young to the point where they never even heard of the Super Bowl show. They didn't know enough to look for it. So I, I was like, "Hey, have you ever seen?" I sent a video. It's like a gift, and they're like, "What is that?" And I'm like, "That's Super Bowl show." <laughs> they're like, "What is?" And they're like, "What?" And I'm like, "Oh!" And I, instead of showing it to them, I was like, "Yeah, you don't want to know about it." But they had no clue what it was. Yeah. I was, Man, you know, you're getting old. I know when you remember that's when you remember that kind of stuff. <laughs> Well, Elliot and I, before we, we got on, we were hemming and hawing and pining about uh, Alice in Chains' Dirt. Probably one of my, my, in my top three albums of all time. And I guarantee you there are people out there who have no clue, zero clue about that album, let alone the band Alice in Chains. I was just going to say, let alone Alice in Chains. I mean, you talked to... How, yeah. Yes. How good that record is. And I remember listening to it on my CD player. In my car in high school. God. You didn't have a tape deck? Yeah. Yeah. I did have for a while. It's funny. <laughs> I bet you guys did too. Oh, you yeah. had the tape with the with the little you put it in the tape thing and then you could play the C D. Yeah. The disc man. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Oh Good yeah. Lord. Yeah. It's like the Spider Man meme. It's like 
<laughs> pointing at each other. <laughs> You're like, okay, we're gonna put, we're gonna use the tape player to put in the tape, but it's gonna play the CD. Right, so good. we're getting desperate so, here, are we? <laughs> so I, you, you got me wondering about the Bears' odds <laughs> for the Super Bowl, yeah. or for what? Oh. Odds to win the Super Bowl. I don't know when this. When was this updated? I don't know when this was updated. I don't know when this is. Updated. 1985. I'm going to pretend it was updated. Oh, updated. Oh, this is not updated. God dang it. Uh, well, wh- whatever I'm gonna way. Find, I'm going to find up to date. I'm going to find up to date. Whatever way it is, it's, they're extreme odds, aren't they? Well, that was 80 to 1, but I think it's higher now because they got in. Because they're in the playoffs, at least. Who is, is the, are the Packers the, the number one bet in the NFC? Uh, oh. uh, in, the, in the NFC, yeah. But but not as far ahead. I mean, this was this was this was New Year's. Um, yeah. Well, this one. When is this updated? Um, yeah, this is on New Year's too. Um, so a few few days back. Um, uh, so Chiefs, Packers, Saints, Bills, mm. and it. So Chiefs are way up on top. Packers, and then Packers closely behind Packers is the Saints. Closely behind the Saints is the Bills. Wait, you said Chiefs behind. are way up on top? Yeah, yeah. So Packers are like a distant number two? Yeah. Well, so 170, 550, 700. Bills are 900. Seahawks are 1,000. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So what yeah. – um, Bears aren't in the top ten. Now, what the, the Chiefs, was their ending record was what, 14-2? and two? Yep. They lost today? They lost. Okay. Um. So who, I guess, kind of shifting gears a little bit uh, – is there a specific team you'd like to see in the divisional round? In the divisional round? Well, let's just go through you'd the prefer to see. Let's go through this how the seeds ended up. So the Packers were number one. Yeah. The Packers were number one seed. The Saints are number two. Seattle's number three. Right now, uh the fourth seed is depending on whether Washington wins Sunday night football tonight. If they win, they get the number four. If they lose And they'll be seven and nine if they win. If they win. If they lose, the Giants will be the number four seed when the NFC six East has six that has ten got record. to be the worst record of all time um, for a team to make the playoffs. And then uh, number five is Tampa. Number six are the LA Rams. And number seven are the Chicago Bears. So who would I like to see in the divisional round? Um, honestly. The um, Bears. <laughs> well, of course, but they would have to get past the Saints because uh, that's that's who right. they're going to play. Right. You know, right. so if I'm looking at it, which would be a, would you be miraculous and insane? Well, just going by right. Well, that would be at the Super. Well, there's no fans, but even though they have not determined who and when are playing yet, we can know. We do know that the Bears will be playing at the Saints next weekend. Uh, the Rams will be playing at Seattle, and Tampa Bay will be playing either at Washington or the Giants. So, who would I want to see? The Tampa Bay is eleven and five. Is going to be playing at a six and ten or seven and nine team. Got to win your division. Yeah. Well, don't forget. I think it was the year that we won the Super Bowl. The Saints went to uh, Seattle. Seattle had a losing record, and they lost. They lost. Yeah, they were seven and nine when they were seven and nine. Yeah. It but Seattle can was like. Happen. They well, were like talk about up and coming, and we just talk about eight and eight teams. The Vikings came in here two thousand four and beat us in the divisional round, so or in the wild card round. So that was yep, that was um, when Randy Moss pulled down his pants and mooned the crowd or whatever. You know, so who would I like to see? I mean, honestly, like I know the Bears are probably not going to beat the Saints, but I could definitely see like the Rams beating Seattle. Or I could see Tampa Bay beating whoever the number four seed is. So, you know, amongst, say, Tampa and the Rams, who would I want to see between those two teams? Uh, probably the Rams, because we haven't played them yet. You know, I there's no familiarity where the, the Buccaneers have, and they do have the recipe to beat us, you know? So I'd rather see the Rams. We played Tampa. In- and the Rams are playing with a, a quarterback who's got a broken finger, who's, who didn't play today. So mm. Now, the Tampa, we played Tampa in Tampa. When we lost, got a butt kicked. Mm-hmm. See, and I look at someone like Tom Brady. It's like he he twenty years he played in New England. The weather means nothing to him. It shouldn't. No. It shouldn't. But he had. I don't a think. Full... It, I don't think it means nothing. He's he was very happy to move down here. He was, and he did say that. <laughs> he did say, "I enjoy this much more than yeah, playing but, in New England." 
Yeah, but I guess what I'm saying is that's fine and dandy, but it's like the guy played for 20 years in that weather and whooped everybody's ass. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, but every every so if minute are like, that you oh, get older, it can't... matters more. I, I get that. I mean, you know, actually, it's a good point because I was at the NFC Championship game where Favre, Favre's last game. I have never seen a more miserable human being on a team than he was in that game. He did not want to be in the state, let alone in that stadium with a chance in the Super Bowl on the line. He looked so miserable, and it showed. He wasn't the only one, though. <laughs> I mean, I was sitting at home watching the game. I'm like, I know miserable, uh, you know. Man, I was there. Yeah, I was in that yeah. stadium, and I was like, and I go, it, it was with the trip with the trip to the Super Bowl. In the past, let's talk about now. Let's talk about going to the Super Bowl yeah. this year. This is true. Yeah, um, yeah I'm with so, you. I'd like to see the Rams. I, th- I think that's actually – Well, yeah, I mean, Goff, he said he, he had broke his finger. Yeah, he had surgery this on, week. Is it on his throwing hand? Yeah. Yep. So we might not play or not. I don't know. Hmm. Um, do you happen to know, Jeremy, the injury situation coming out of this game for us? Who did we – Barnes got banged up twice, but I think he came back twice. Yeah, I, I didn't see him come back the second time. If you saw that, then, you know. Um, I, maybe not. I'll, I, I don't I'll recall. That. But I know Rick Wagner, um, he uh, he was blocking, and he had a guy roll up on the he back got rolled of up. his leg pretty good. Yep. So, that was early in the game. Yeah, and you could tell he was he, – he just fought through it. You could tell he was – I'm hurt. almost surprised that doesn't happen more. I, like, right, right. It, it happens a lot, but I'm almost surprised it doesn't even happen more. You're – Always seeing oh, guys. Oh, totally. Like that and you know what? I'm surprised that guys up. don't wear the like those those full cast on knee braces. That yeah. you know what I mean? Those ones that you see that they, they look they look like a, a wrapped up piece of metal. You yeah, know? I know. Um, it's like scaffolding around. Yeah, right, knee. right. There you go. Um, but I, if I were a lineman, it's like any time the play was completely dead, I would be like backing out, <laughs> back, getting away from any pile. Attack. I mean, that's easier said than done. But it's like I remember. Um, Go back to Favre mentioned that like if you looked at he was always part of the reason he, he you know he never really got truly hurt was anytime he was always backing up and backing away from things his whole career and if you do kind of watch it's um I mean that'll serve you well because nine times out of ten when you get injured it's some freak thing where you get rolled up on or you get you know what I mean oh totally it, it, he said he kind of like made it a an effort to to do that yeah because he had so much arm strength he literally rarely stepped into a throw and he was yeah, like he'd almost stepped back right was like, well he was he, as soon as he threw the ball he was like moving back and it was it was really awkward and weird but i think that attributed to his healthiness yeah. uh through his career you know because he was a guy who like i think like only one time got rolled up on really bad yeah did you see that um that tom brady broke one of his records today though Favre. yeah which one what was it for for uh most not most consecutive, but most, most something, most. Yeah. Well, I mean, Brady, how, Brady, most how old is he? Is he 43? He's 43, yeah. So it might be most total games or something. I don't know. Far played till he was 40, right? Yeah. So Brady's something 43. Like yeah. So, yeah. He's going to have the longest career of any quarterback, I think. Brady, I do think. Warren, I mean, he's, yeah, maybe. Look, he, he still looks pretty good. I mean, yeah. he's not. He was well, never I mean, mobile, so it's not like, oh, he's not mobile anymore. He never was. So it's like, well, who wants to who wants to beat that record? They make so much money. Why would you want to put yourself through through that abuse? Have you seen these guys' egos? They can't fit into the I, no. universe. <laughs> Their True. egos are so big. That's exactly why they want to do it. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I, I mean, I know what you're saying, but that's the simple answer. It's like. Pfft. This ultimate alpha male crap out there. It's like they just love. No, you're right. That. You're right. That's as simple as that. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd go. I'd I'd be going Andrew Luck on the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how much money did I make? I mean, yeah, they're, they're, I'm, they're, I'm they're, out. You, I'm out. You, I know. You gotta <laughs> think. There's gotta be times. Seriously, there's gotta be times when Brady like gets smashed by somebody when he was in New yeah. England towards the end there, when he's like. I've won, you know, maybe before he won in six. He's like, I won five Super Bowls. I've made $200 million. Do I really need to do this? But the answer is yes. Because, <laughs> well, 
it's such a select group of people that have a chance to be that great. So it's like, if you are in a position to play that long and be that good, it's like, and your ego is that big. Does he make as much on endorsements as Aaron Rodgers does? He makes much Brady? more from last time I remember. Brady? But but on, on what? Like, I don't see him that much. Um, I, mean, I, I know I live in Green Bay. I know I, I don't know what he but, endorses. So that's a good but, question. But, but, but what are the big things that he endorses? Because I see Aaron Rodgers and Pat Mahomes on, on uh, uh, the the insurance thing. Oh, yeah, he's doing State Farm all the time. Yeah, I mean, but what? And Bergstrom. The, well, Bergstrom's local. I, mean, I know, I know. I'm being silly. But. So, I mean, does does he have a lot of local things that he does? Is that is that why we don't see it? Yeah, I, and ever and since like you know printed copies of magazines have all come and gone, I always saw his ads in there too for like um, Gillette Brady? and for Gillette because obviously at that time, if you remember, their stadium was sponsored by Gillette. So it wasn't anymore. I don't think it is anymore, but I could be wrong. I was just looking at this message from my dad from uh, Slack. Don't suck, and I think we're in the Super Bowl. That's good all take. that it takes. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's right all there. it takes. <laughs> oh, man, he's funny. Um, yeah, I, like, I, you guys know how I feel about Tom Brady. Um, we know you love him. Your your fan club has reached a million, so let's not. Million. Well, let's let's talk about the facts. Uh, I'm kidding. Well, a, a quick Google shows that uh, Tom Brady has 12 million in total endorsements, and uh, Aaron Rodgers is what nine million. Uh, and isn't Tom Brady like he he like endorses like some quack stuff too? It's like it's like pseudo science, well, like nutrition stuff, doesn't he? No, but it the like Under Armour. Un, Under Armour is probably the most well known thing. And Tag Heuer and uh, uh, Simmons betting. That might, is that a local thing? I never heard of That's that. Not local. And Ugg. Simmons betting. I I don't know. I don't. I, what is that? They're a bed maker. Okay. They make I mean, like, okay. What a riveting podcast we have now. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> for 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 an NFL quarterback to endorse a bed. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my God, well, you remember Favre? He was doing like Rayovac batteries and Sensodyne toothpaste, and now it's Copper yeah. Fix. You know the, the yeah, but he's uh, old now. He's retired, right? That which makes, makes sense. but he was no, he, he was doing Sensodyne yeah. in his playing days. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I mean, Rayo whatever. Bag. I I didn't mean to take things off topic, but I that, that's interesting. He should have endor- like he. Would, I don't see. I don't see any Under Armour ads ever. He should have. So I don't look. I don't we know. all know Favre should have been endorsing Crocs from day one. Can you imagine the money that piled in with that? Oh, oh my God. I don't think Crocs are even made anymore, are they? Yeah, they are. Oh, they are. They are. Really? You know what's funny? Crocs are going to be like trucker heads. anything. Yeah, it's going to be. Look, like, you guys, I'm sure, like, when I, w- when I was in, in high school or middle school around that time or whatever, like 90s, basically the 90s, you wouldn't be caught dead in a mesh foam hat. Not gonna happen. And then in like the early two thousands, they came back and people were wearing them all over the place. And you're like, "What yeah. the hell happened?" <laughs> Seriously, I remember like I would you would make fun of them all over the place. And then they come back. And you're like, and then like when flat brim hat. Remember when you saw somebody with a flat brim hat in the nineties and it wasn't curled right. like like half a circle? You were like, "Look at this clown!" Now everything's flat brim. So it's like Crocs are gonna be the same thing. Like. Few years from now, you're gonna be like, you're gonna be laughing at him, but everybody's gonna be wearing him again. Ridiculous. And there's there's our segment on Andy's fashion advice. <laughs> oh boy, if, if we're relying on me for that, there, there's trouble. Um, it, it what is funny is um, when I got out of the hospital, or no, when I was in the hospital. Uh, I think it was my dad put one of my hats for the creature of the real thing put on my head, and it was a flat brim. And I I look, I put it on, and I go. This is ugly, and I like because <laughs> I was just like I get the of, brim a lot, and I did. I I have one where I curled the brim like it was goose gossip. Remember, <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, Dave Stewart. Remember him? Yeah, it was like oh, yeah. you literally like you you tie like a um a rubber a band, can, a rubber band, and a soup can. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, Seriously, I would do that. For, so yeah, and you do that, uh, and you do it, and you do it for days, right? And then when it was right. done, it was like completely. I know. 
it's these are things like when they're happening when you're like in middle school and high school you're like you're like oh this is all just you know normal whatever and then this is the way it is (laughs) yeah exactly you're like it's never going to change and then you're like you become get off my lawn guy you know it's like back back in my day we curled our (laughs) brim it is so funny how all that stuff all that nostalgia and stuff works it's so silly like i was back do you remember back in back in my day people curled their mullets (laughs) <laughs> do you remember do you remember tight do you remember tight rolled jeans yes i did that oh yeah, oh, yeah. i tried to explain that to my daughter the other day and i thought she was going to jump out the window i was like <laughs> you i was like you would not be caught dead without tight rolled jeans when when you're in middle school if you didn't tight roll your jeans you were not you were an outcast yes <laughs> true story I, know. I don't i i still don't i still don't really understand that at all I don't understand it either, but when it was happening, you're like, this is how it's going to be. I'm going to do it. If I want to be cool, I'm tight rolling <laughs> yes. my beans. Yes, and at the time, you're like, I got to do this. Right. I remember, my, I remember my mom saying, what are you doing? And I'm like, we have to do it. We have to do it. <laughs> I, I like half-heartedly did it. Didn't care if it unfurled. Here's it, another but, uh... one. Do you remember when, you, when people would wear the um, uh, overalls with one of the things yeah. on the button? <laughs> Yeah. If you wore both buttons, yeah. one unbutton hanging off. Oh my god! Right. I was watching an episode online of In Living Color. That oh yeah! Oh yeah! And they had this guest rapper on. It was this white guy who was a rapper, Vanilla Ice. And no, no. And he had like Jordash, <laughs> like, <laughs> like overalls with like one of the things hanging down. And you're looking at this and you're just like, oh my God, shoot this into the sun. But back then it was, it's just, that stuff is so funny. I mean, well, even taking this back to football, look how big everybody's uniforms and pads were. Mm. You, you look at the nineties and you're like, you're like, what the hell is this? And now you look at got, nobody's wearing anything. You know, well, it's like, it, I, I just got done watching um, the last season of Lance, uh, last chance university. I don't know if you guys have ever watched that, but last chance. Oh, that about Miami, I think. No, no, no. It's about uh, these junior colleges across the nation where all, oh. of, these, all of these phenomenally talent, fo- talented football players go to like Florida state, you know, uh, Michigan and stuff like that. And they fail because either their attitude is really piss poor or they had really bad grades. Well, they go to these junior colleges to try to reinvigorate their platform or their, their resume, I should say. So they go and play football at a junior college and literally they have like advisors that are responsible for making sure that these kids go to class, making sure that they actually get a C minimum grade. And I'm like, oh my God. They're like handlers. There you go. That's the good word for it. So handlers. I just got done watching that. And I don't know where I was going to go with the story now. I completely. Was it that? Was it the big pads? Oh, right, right. So they were in the locker room on one of the episodes. And uh, each player had to have a buddy because they put the, the jersey on over their pads and they put the, t- took the jersey off. And they needed another player to assist them to do it because it was so tight. Yeah. It's it's so, so like you look at like um like in the even in the nineties the mid nineties like like with Favre Favre looks like he played middle linebacker now with his pads it's just it's it, it's weird to see and then remember those those actual linebackers that had like the big oh, piece the on the piece. back yeah what the heck oh my god I think Kevin Green had one of those back then it's just like Johnny Holland did yeah it's it's funny like how big some of those pads got and then. You look at guys now, it's like, oh, they have like receivers or whatever. It's like, oh, they have leg pads and it's basically just like a piece of paper underneath. Well, they call their pads the pad. shells now and they literally live up to that name. They're shells. Oh, my God. Of what they used to be. Yeah. I mean, I guess they did all that too. They wanted to lose weight so they could be faster, but obviously it's and technology goes up or whatever. So I, I get the, the sensibilities, but it's just, it, it is funny to see that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The size of some of those pads is just nuts. Um, but yeah, the, it, I don't know. It's, and here's another weird thing. If you ever, like, I was watching highlights of something or another in, um, the game, the Monday night game with Favre, where he threw the miraculous catch to Antonio Freeman, where he's like, oh, he caught it and rolled off his back. Yeah, the game I went to. That game was in 2000, 2000? 2000 and... It might've been 2000? 2002. Okay. I think. Well, say it's 2002. The footage looks like oh, the recruiter right. footage right it looks like it's from the 1960s and you're like 
it's really come that far because like you got 8k now or whatever right. and it's like you look at right. you look at footage like i was watching i i don't even know why i think it was um getting ready for my dad's interview and i was watching fourth and 26 and the tv feed from 2004 looks like 1978 compared to now yeah. you're like well, even the, like even that like, what? The Everything's footage, mushy. <laughs> right? The footage, the, even the lighting in the system in, in Lambo oh, and the graphics. So the gra- your graphics are like the, what the, is this? The lighting in Lambo had like this yellow tinge to it. Where now yeah, it's, it's like it's you know it's got that LED tinge to it. It's almost white when you're looking out there. It is. Daylight. It is strange because I'm like I'm like it really wasn't that long ago. But in 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 reality, it was. You know, 2002 was 18 years ago. Right. Like, right. Okay, that is kind of a long time. I guess that's the difference between. What were the UHF and the, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. But yeah, yeah, it's just fun. No, I hear about that all the time. The phenomenon between like, you know, how long ago things were and then how long ago that was to something in the yeah. past. Yeah. Uh, it's like, oh yeah. It's almost like those... years before that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Or even you see like the grain the grainy World War II footage where like mm-hmm. everything looks yeah. like hyper Black like the speed white. is like everything's really quick though. Like all the guys are like it's all black and white and grainy, but everybody's moving really quick right. past the dirt, 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 dirt. Like they have Teddy well, Roosevelt. Even like Teddy like Roosevelt, like the president, he's like. Right. You're like, what? <laughs> I mean, just look, at what look, at, look at what we're doing here. And like, we're doing video across, literally across the country today. And like, we wouldn't have done even thought about, I didn't even want to do this a year ago, you know, like, but. Well, um, why'd you but do we, it? Well, I mean, like, well, because editing videos <laughs> is, is, is a pain, but it. But te- it's technically possible. Yeah, it that's, is, that's it, amazing. The tools exist, and they're they're reasonable for reasonable people to be able to have in their home. So it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's so I was cool. just so I was just go, going back to football and Lambo and all that. Going back to the topic on hand, um, they're going to have fans at Lambo, but it's only going to be like I think healthcare it's, workers. And, it's just going to be the medical people again. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be like five hundred people. Or is it going to be more than that? Have no, they officially designated this yet? I wanted to say it was going to be like a couple thousand, or am I wrong? Well, I think it's it's going to be dependent on who shows up. I'm counting on maybe having more, but I think it's the healthcare people and their families. I mean, it's 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 interesting, obviously, that I think we have a home field advantage because of the climate, all that kind of stuff. Um, but but the fans thing is like it's just interesting. You know, well, it's I'm not what I'm not I, what, what I, to make I, of it. I feel like last week had the fans been there, that would have been a difference maker. And I think at our first playoff game at home, having you fans mean the, there, the game against uh, who the hell was Tennessee? Tennessee yeah. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. I, mean, I think that would I, I think it would have mattered. I mean, yeah, I, I understand, you know, that it still went fine, but I mean, that I mean, was a snow game too, so it's almost like on top yeah. of that, yeah, yeah. But I mean, man, I I would have been taking my clothes off. It was it was it would have been so hot in there, you know. Well, you got to show us that mole yeah. you were talking about. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, let's not encourage him, Andy. Come on. No, I won't. <laughs> oh my god! If, if you look, if you if you give me a millimeter, I take you take twenty eight miles. miles. <laughs> yeah. I, I okay. So so I actually don't. But I I, I don't even remember what that was. What that was in response to, but it was like something on something, and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> well, you were, I think, I think you were trying to say something like, I'm getting like my hair standing up on end or something, but it, no, it said, no, so no, I was just, I, I was just you're getting excited, insane. No, no, it, it was funny though. When I read it, I was like, did I read that right? And I'm like, <laughs> it, was, it was just nonsense. Like, it's funny, but I think in a playoff game, having fans in the stands, and especially depending on the opponent. Yeah. I mean, like when I look at, I guess the reason I'm saying that is like, you know, the home field advantage I look at is more like the climate, obviously this year that, more than anything, because, yeah. because look, I mean, when you, I hate to say it, but when you come to Lambeau, it is not a hostile crowd. It hasn't been for a long, long time. Um, so, you know, hostile negative, but hostile positive. Well, hostile to the like to the opposing team. Hostile right? like the Eagle fans are to their opposing oh, fans. Oh my word! Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's going to be any. You remember, do, Elliot? Do you remember? But... Do you remember? Do you remember how worked up my dad was at the Eagles fans? Yeah. Even I was surprised. He was. It's like, yeah. yeah I mean, we aren't even in the same stratosphere. No, no, Eagles. no. And and they and they're legendary. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, 
Yeah, you know, they belong in a diff- in the other kind of football. You know, that's that's the kind of fans they I are. I guess it's kind of like, to me, in a way, it could be like the way the Packers treat their special teams in that it's like, look, the... Where's this going? Well, oh, I know hear me out. No, hear me out. So, like, Seattle. I went, I've went. i been to Seattle. I went to um, the opening game in 2014 when, after they won the Super Bowl. I'm telling you, that was the loudest event i've ever been to i've been to yeah. heavy metal concerts yeah. i've never worn earplugs in the second half of that game i wore earplugs i think some of it's the architecture but some of it's I also think, uh, I think some of it is the architecture and the, so it's well, self, some of it is self fulfilling right but a lot of it is the fans and it's like that literally is they say it's the 12th man i'm like it yeah. damn near is that makes yeah. a difference yeah. if you could get something like that i'm not saying to replicate it but it's like you go into lambo and it's like you got Joe Bull behind you, like sit down, sit down. I can't no, see. We don't have that. We're we're we're. It's it's like a Slipknot concert in our section. I don't know. Well, you're in the wrong place. A Slipknot concert. <laughs> hmm. I guess I'm over on the other side with the um, Captain yeah, Tenille, Captain and Tennille. <laughs> Ridiculous. I mean, they'll they'll be like, get up, get up. It's third down, and you hear like. Eh. I'm like, seriously, in Seattle, it was like nonstop. I mean, yeah. when, when the Packers were on the field, when the, it was like you could damn near hear a pin drop when Seattle's out there. I seriously, you guys, I've been to like Pantera concerts, like 20 rows back and with amplifiers practically on my face. Right. And I didn't wear earplugs. At there, I was like, I can't do this. I couldn't believe it. So it just kind of really. When you compare that to Lambo, you're like, this isn't even. But that's that's ninety percent of other stadiums. It'd just be nice if we had a hostile right. crowd to the opponent well, where it could actually. It'd be like, nice if we had a crowd. I, that's all I'm saying. Like we. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna. It's obvious. We're gonna have different. nothing. We're I know. It's nothing. Th- that's the and thing. Other, it is, and other places are gonna have something, and that's not fair. You go. We have an extra advantage. COVID. You're gonna get COVID. I don't know what we're. Doing. <laughs> I don't. I don't understand this. When they, when they go out on the field, everybody's just coughing on them. <laughs> I mean, Grandpa Bay has their 25% capacity. Why Why can't we do that? Why, why can't we do that? Why can't we go every third seat? Why can't we do that? Capacity. Why can't we do that? Because it's out of control. Well, we can't go too far down this. Um, tam- Who's the owner of the Buccaneers? Out of control. Glazer. Who's the owner? It's not a laser in Wisconsin. Did you say laser? Glazer. Oh, glazer. Laser. Laser. <laughs> oh, My <God>. brother? <laughs> oh, no, the guy from the Bears, the old, old Bill Laser. Bill Laser. No. It's G- uh, Glazer, G L A Z E R. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking oh, okay. about. I thought you said laser for a minute. <laughs> no. Um, it's... That is a yeah. funny name. It's like, what's your name? Bill. What's your last name? Laser. What? <laughs> your your full so, name is I, William so I was Laser. Wondering, have they talked about the Super Bowl at all? Are there going to be are they going to be a twenty five percent capacity for Super, Super Bowl? Bowl? Is in Tampa, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh. So is that going to be the limit? Well, see, each each team no has authority over what they can do. So um, the Super because Bowl it's state by state, it's, it's state by state at that point. But I think the Super Bowl yeah. is a little bit different in that regard, where I think the NFL has a say in it as well. Uh, but I yeah. the, the last I've heard is they're going to allow fans, but it's undetermined how many. So okay. I, I don't know. Um, yeah. I mean, I know all around Lambo right now, they, they have all the signs and they were put up well before the season started, but they have all those signs about uh, masking and social distancing and washing your hands. It was almost like a prelude to what possibly was going to happen in the future. So I was kind of yeah. thinking, you know, when, when we have a playoff game here, are they actually going to have, yeah. you know, 16 or 25% of fans here? It doesn't sound like they're going to, but. They're not going to. They said they weren't. Yeah. So. I don't know. I mean, I hate to be Mr. But it's like, I could give a shit if there's any fans in the stands. If it helps us to beat the opponent, I'm all for well, it. But other than that, don't care. Well, I just want to go to the Super Bowl win. I mean, I'm going to be, I would be there. You know, mm. I would be there. So I care. You'd be there. Oh, I hear you. No, I hear you. I, that's a good point. I mean, I, I probably would be too. Um. I guess it's just so, a, it's, it's an idea of perception, though. Like for me, 
you know, after this year, I'm pretty easy going about it. If we have fans, so what? If we do have fans, so what? You know, that's how I well, feel. Well, in terms of watching the game, but I, but I do, I, I guess I don't like the, uh, the, the disparity. You know, I mean, oh. it's one thing if, if I, if it's one thing if Seattle's fans are louder, or if their architecture makes them louder. I guess, but it's another thing if one, one stadium is allowed to put 25 percent of their fans in and then another stadium puts none like that just seems yeah. like an unfair i hear advantage. that yeah. you know what's interesting i mean i didn't really think about this until but like think about it hear me out baseball you know every every nfl field is 100 yards right is what is it wide it's like 45 yards wide I can't remember. but every field is identical Every goalpost, identical. And then when you think about baseball, baseball, it's like, oh, this one, it's 385 to center field. This one, it's 415. And over here, left field, it's like, that always struck me as, you know. Now, obviously, like the stadium itself and and, and the uh, seating arrangements and stuff is different. Um, but the field, the playing field is identical to a right. tee. I never but get base, it But baseball is like, I guess you could say it's, I mean, it's 90, 90 feet to, to all the bases and all that. But outside of that, it's like, how in the world do you have a center field that's 25 feet further and the wall might even be three feet higher than the other? It's yeah. like, it, I, yeah. that is really weird how that. Um, yeah. And I mean, I wouldn't have thought too much of it like a long, long time ago. But with the amount of money that's being made now, you're like, what are they doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I just that always kind of struck me as kind of odd. Mm-hmm. Well, think about it. You raise the you raise the the wall an extra foot. How many how many uh, home runs does that cut down on? Well, sure. Push yeah, it back an extra foot. I mean, I mean, they look. They always cut the said. Mil- oh, it's not even Miller Park anymore. It's some other. Whatever. No, no. As of I, I, I like on the hour on on New Year's Eve, the Facebook page changed from Miller Park to Amfam Park, and I'm like, and and then all the complaints started spewing in because everybody's <laughs> drinking on New Year's. I'm like, why would you change it on, on New Year's Day? <laughs> Goofy, but um, I mean, they look. They always said, you know, it's a band box because it's like you can hit a ton of home runs there you know, versus other stadiums. It's very home run friendly, as they say. So yeah. um, anyway, it's just one of those weird things. But uh, it's totally weird. Yeah, you know, that is with the. Again, it's kind of like that hostile environment thing. It's like how how much does 10,000 fans in Tampa Bay? Well, I'm just arbitrarily throwing out there. 10,000 fans in, in Tampa Bay versus 500 fans in Green Bay. It's like, what does that equate to in competitive advantage? I don't know. The. Yeah, I don't know. Um, now, again, the only one I've – I haven't been to any, every NFL stadium, but I've probably been to almost half of them. And, again, the only one that ever made me think about twice about anything was Seattle because it was like – I was just like – I could not believe how, like, much louder it was versus everything else. I was just like, this is madness. <laughs> so, anywho. And she'll see. Yeah. I don't know. I'm so like on, I don't know if I can take a week off. I know. I hit, you almost <laughs> do want to go right into it. Oh my but. God. <laughs> we need a buy, right? We don't need a buy. <laughs> <Right? laughs> we're, we're all Wait. over the place. <laughs> oh, you're but so, don't, you're but, so you're, look at Elliot. He's like, I don't know if I want to buy <laughs> in Florida. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll be fine. I'll get by. But you can't go fat tire biking. Ooh. I did a race this weekend. Well, I can. Well, not in the snow. In the swamp. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> or the sandy beach. <laughs> that's true. In the sandy beach. I never quite yeah. understood. That. That's got to be a pain in the ass to ride one of those uh, bikes. Beach cruiser is where they started, and they kind of. I think it. they have even fatter tires for the for those. Yeah, because it's like. Yeah. Oh, jets fire Adam Gase. He went oh, yeah. nine and twenty three in two seasons. Yep. Yeah, they're saying him and uh, uh, Doug Marone, the Jacksonville coach, are going to be the next ones. You know what team looks pretty scary right now in the AFC? The Bills. Well, yeah, they could win it all. They look like an up. I actually think they might. I think they might be. I, they have a legit shot. Yeah, I think they're. I. I. I don't know. I just feel like I. I feel like the Chiefs are like the Packers of two thousand eleven. Yeah. 
they very much. Yeah. I mean, even look, they rested Mahomes at the end. Yeah. They lost. Yeah. Well, we we ended up. We didn't even we didn't even think we were going to beat the Lions, but then freaking Matt Flynn threw six touchdowns. <laughs> God, he owned, that was funny. He owned the Packers uh, single game touchdown record. Yeah, yeah. That's so far, never threw six. You know, I just I just don't uh, I don't know. I and I like I like the Chiefs, and I like the fact that they kind of you know they've gotten better over the last few years, but. Yeah, I mean they're I not. A, I don't hate that team. I guess you just. I, I, I look. It feels I, like they're getting. It feels like they're starting to get cocky, and I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, just weird. I'll tell you what, though. I look at Mahomes versus even Rogers in his prime, and it's like Rogers is was great, all that kind of stuff. But it's like, I don't even think Rogers could score at the pace that Mahomes does. That guy could throw three touchdowns in like two minutes. It is just. Do you remember that playoff game? Well, it was last year. It was, it was the quote game that got them to the Super Bowl, but um, they were down like twenty-four to three against the Texans, and then they yeah. scored three touchdowns in like less than five minutes, and they blew them. Yeah. They were down twenty-four to three in that game, and they blew them out. Well, they won't be playing the Texans this year. This is true, and Bill O'Brien ain't there anymore. You know, I I just. I don't think they're going to be able to pull that off. I, they, I mean, they're still the favorite to win, you know, but like everything is so it's everything's making it look so easy for them. And when you got, you got, you got so, so many things stacked. Well, here's favorite. a question. What is the formula to beat Mahomes? You got to pressure him, I guess. I think you got to get in his head. Nobody's but how do you been able that? to do that? I don't know. Because I look at Mahomes versus Petten, and I'm like, ooh. I, honestly, I, I was just going to say what beats Mahomes, and I think it's a Mike Petten run defense. I think it's a defense that keeps everything in front of him. I really do. That's one team <laughs> amongst the 30, uh, 30 other teams that I see a Mike Petten scheme defense doing pretty well against just because it doesn't allow you to get beat over the top. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, like how is their running game, and how is their – intermediate but i've seen like highlights of Mahomes, and it's like man is... offensively they truly have no weaknesses except for probably their their offensive line they've had some injuries there um so who's a running back uh clyde edwards hilaire who was a rookie from lsu who came national champion last year and then i don't know if you remember they picked up Le'Veon bell mid-season oh god that's right is he doing anything though i've heard uh, he's you know he's just he's there you know the Jets. Yeah. But, I mean, I was going to ask you guys this question, too. Like, you know, when you look at the the playoff um, teams in each division, who are your favorites? And AFC, NFC? AFC, or, NFC, or, yeah. Look, I I think the Bills, yeah. they're, they're a team to watch. I really the, ones on, the, ones on, the ones that are on top are my favorites. They really are. To I win. Mean, I the see Bills. so much of the Packers the, in 2011 yeah. in the in in the Chiefs right now. I really do, um, but I I don't think they're going to look. The Packers' defense in 2011 was the worst in the league. Um, I don't think the Chiefs have the worst defense in the league. So if anything, that's that's a good thing for them, right? And I hate to say it, Mahomes probably better than even what Rodgers was. It, yeah, it's the Chiefs to lose. Yeah, it really is. Um, it's theirs to lose, but, but look, I mean, look, I mean, but yeah, I mean, the Packers—they were, I mean, they were humming, and they got punched in the mouth in the division playoffs. So I, as soon as a team could punch them in the mouth, could do something. I mean, they really haven't been punched in the mouth because mm-hmm. um, that's the other thing that kind of that that uh, the Chiefs kind of remind me of is they're kind of a finesse team. They don't strike me as a pounded at you. They strike me as a quick strike. You know, Mahomes throwing all these crazy passes, but if you could punch him in the mouth. Um, but I, I, I mean, in terms of it, it really is probably the the Chiefs to lose, but I like the Bills. Um, the Steelers, I mean, they were like got almost looking like they were going to go undefeated, but then they like lost three in a row at the end. I, they're always pretty good. I don't know what to make of them, though. Um, and that's really all I really know about the NFC in terms of playoffs. Uh, NFC, hmm, who scares me? I mean, this, 
the Saints still kind of do. I mean, I'm trying every everything is kind of different now because everything does have to go through Lambeau. Um, so it's like if we got the Saints at Lambeau, that's huge for us. If we had to go to the Saints, oh, I mean, we beat them there, but doing it again, I don't know. Um, I don't know a whole lot. I mean, Seattle, we beat them here. We don't do well there, but we, we do pretty well against them at Lambeau. Uh, the Rams, I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about them. And if Goff is hurt, that's not good for them. Um, what are, Now, is uh, the Cardinals, did they make the playoffs? Bears not. They missed it? Bears had the tiebreaker over the Cardinals. I mean, I'm not terribly worried about the Bears, but, look, I mean, it's obviously the playoffs are the playoffs. Um. Once we got, to, uh, I could sit here and say, "Oh, I'm not worried at all about the NFC East." But you missed Grandpa Bay. I know I, I haven't gotten to them yet. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to make of them versus us in that because we were winning that game like ten to nothing, yeah. and then I, I think Rogers threw the back to back interceptions, and I think that just absolutely snowballed that game. Um, and getting them at home. So no one really like scares me like, ah, we have no chance or anything. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Jeremy? Um, AFC. Uh, AFC is, I, I think it's kind of a toss up. I, I mean, Kansas city to me is on, on paper. They're the head and heels above everybody else. Time kind of a team. Um, their offense is literally unstoppable. Uh, hard to contain them. Their defense is, is pretty good. You know, they, they can be good at times. Um, Buffalo. I don't know what to make of them be, because they've lost to teams like Tennessee and got blown out by them, but then they beat teams like Pittsburgh, you know, at home. So there's so much unknown to them or so much unknown from them to me. Uh, I don't know what team's going to show up. And I, I, I truly don't know Pittsburgh. I think they scare me the most just because they have a pretty dang good defense. I mean, they, they lost Bud Dupree, who was the bookend to TJ Watt. Uh, that hurts them, but they've got plenty of supporting cast around him to, to get pressure. And, and uh, their Kevin Butler, their defensive coordinator finds so many ways to get pressure on quarterbacks. So I don't ever doubt that he can. <laughs> It'd be interesting if it was a rematch of Super Bowl. Yeah, I would I would like that because I think that'd be a very interesting matchup in that respect. Um, I mean, Big Ben back then was – obviously, he was in his prime. Man, you remember when he threw that touchdown pass at the end of the game to San Antonio Holmes? It was beautiful. Holy – you talk beautiful. about Beautiful. Like, that was probably the best pass I've ever seen. I mean, the clutch. You, you can't get pass. any more clutch. No. He was – and he's funny because he's like he's like a big lumbering guy, but he just gets it done. Yeah. But what I'm getting at is right now I would take Rodgers 10 times out of 10 over Roethlisberger right now. Back then, Rodgers still kind of up and coming, but Big Ben was in his prime. So, but but hell, they started off ten and zero, right? You know, uh, you know, and I think the one the one team to watch for in the AFC, and I think last year they definitely underperformed considering what they Ravens the Ravens. Um, they that's right. They were fourteen and two, and they right? Like, and now th- this year they're eleven and five, and they always seem to perform better when they come from an underdog status. You know what I mean? And they're a five seed right now, so I don't think a lot of teams are looking at them and saying that they're gonna do much. They could be very dangerous. So out of the AFC, I would I would go with either Buffalo, Pittsburgh, or Baltimore. Um, in the NFC, um, I hate to show my bias, but I think the Packers are. I don't doubt any game that they're put in that they can't come out on top on. I really don't. They've, they've shown this whole season that they can win the ugly game, that they can win a full four quarter game against Tennessee. Um, and they can have a bad defensive performance and win games like they did in New Orleans. Yeah. The only so, game they got blown out in was the Tampa game, right? Yeah. Was that the only game? Was it, what other game did they lose? They lost to Minnesota at home. At that, but that wasn't a blowout. No, and they lost to Indianapolis on the road in overtime. And that wasn't a blowout. No, that's what I they mean. Every won. single game, except for Tampa. Except for Tampa, they've been in it. Yeah, and I'm wondering. And that's all the they Tampa. Th- the Tampa thing, as I go back to it, Rodgers threw two interceptions in that game. Yeah, it was like we were like fall. I mean that. That's why I said it was like. I think mentally he was struggling for like a quarter after he threw his second interception. And he he would love a do over on that one. 
Yeah, you would. So I be careful I, I what you wish be for. Of them. Be careful what you wish for. Their path I rush. <laughs> I know. Not Pierre well, Paul. I mean, th- you know, their path. But Pierre Kassou. Paul's older than dirt. Doesn't man. matter. He's he's got ten and a half sacks. He's got four fump forced fumbles. The dude is just. Are you serious? Yeah, he's just a. He's an animal. Now, do, do they have DeForest Buckner on that? No, he's with Indianapolis. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, but out of the NFC, I, I, uh, uh, New Orleans scares me just because they they do have good a good team. You know, the, they have good players. But I, did I, they finish with an identical record? No, they were twelve and four. Um, but I don't know if you guys have watched Drew Brees since he came back from his uh, broken ribs. He doesn't look like he has the arm strength to get the ball downfield. And um, he looked like he didn't have the arm strength when he was playing us. He wasn't right. Throwing anything over 10 yards. Um, and it was the opponent before last game that really challenged Drew Brees downfield. Like they were forcing him to throw the ball foot downfield and he could not make the throws. So, um, and, and plus Alvin Kamara is out with COVID. So we don't know how long he's going to be out for. Um, so really, I think in the NFC, uh, I think it's between us and uh, a team like um, watch out for Washington if they can get in. I think they got the recipe. To See, do. that's the thing. It's like, you know, even like we, we sit here and make fun of the six and ten or the seven and nine right. in NFC. And it's like I could see. And it's the playoffs now. And this is yeah. the NFL. Wouldn't that be just the killer? Mm-hmm. You know, well, again, it happened to the Saints. You know, against right. they they had to go to Seattle, and Seattle was right. seven and nine, and they lost. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't remember the last time a sub five hundred team has made it to the Super Bowl. It's been a while. Oh my, it's been a while. That's it's it had to have been a long, right, long time. Right. So I think the odds are stacked against any team in in that. Yeah, I agree with that record. Um, I mean, look, but I'm I I could see them rip uh, getting up one win. Yeah, sure. easy, mm-hmm. easy. Yep. 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 Um, the Giants. Uh, if if the Giants were to sneak, su- they are our kryptonite in the play. But the, I, but the Giants I don't know. have a quarterback to speak. I mean, Daniel <laughs> Jones is horrible, horrible. Yeah. If we thought Mitch Trubisky was bad, put oh, Daniel yeah, Jones right. there. Right. He's right. not there yet. He's not a star yet. So if I had a, if I had to predict a Super Bowl, I would say that it's going to be uh, Baltimore and Green Bay. Mm. Baltimore beating the Chiefs. I think so. I don't know a lot about Baltimore, to be honest. Uh, very good defense, and they got Lamar Jackson, who they can beat you. Yeah. Who can defense. beat you? When was yeah. the last time the When was the last time the Ravens didn't have a good? Defense? Right, yeah. that's like saying Pittsburgh never had a defense. Yeah, yeah you I mean? you talk about a, a a dichotomy of uh, philosophy. Mm-hmm. How much does Baltimore um, value inside linebacker? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Like we value, I don't know, no quarterback or whatever. Yeah, I mean that you can you can throw that similarity in there, you know. But I mean, you know, the the Baltimore, the Ravens have Lamar Jackson, who we forget won the MVP last year. Yeah, um, he can carry a team. He can carry a team. Yeah, you know, he could. So, I'm excited to see this this year's playoffs because I. I think in other years you could kind of throw your eggs into one basket and say so and so. Like last year, I thought San Francisco head and heels were going to get through the the NFC, but the AFC, I had no clue. You know? Yeah. Wow. Well, you, you know, it's and, I mean, and, but, and we also don't know like somebody could be on the COVID list, right? <laughs> right. You know, um, right. The last time Rogers had the opportunity. He didn't get to it, but the last time he had the opportunity to play an NFC Championship game at home was 2011. They lost in the divisional round. Um, 2014, they had to go on the road to Seattle. And 2016. Had, it would have been at home if they'd beaten the Bills. That year, they laid an egg against the Bills. That ended up hurting them. Um, but, so this is, man, it's, you, you could say it's Super Bowl or bust, but it, you can't ask for anything better. You just can't. Nope. Your odds are better if you got to buy because <laughs> you don't play the game. And, and you're the number one freaking seed. And you're the number one you know? seed. Yeah. 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 You're just, you, you want to be there. We're in a good spot. So you got to else, guys? No, I'm, I think I'm pretty good. We talked about all the major topics to include fashion from the 1990s. Mm, thank, you, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and Andy will show you about how to tight roll jeans on our next episode. Uh, oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> 
You guys did it. Don't deny it. I did. I'm going to hold you to that. I, I did it too. Not for very long, but I did it. Yeah. 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 I mean, that wasn't, that wasn't like a five year thing. That was like a two year thing, maybe. I think you're right. It was like it yeah, felt, one, it felt one or like, two things. It felt like ten years. It, it felt like my whole we were, high school career. <laughs> yeah, it did. The fact that we remember it, right? It felt. It must have felt longer. Yeah, yeah. Lord. Yep. All right, nerds. All right. Podcast, podcast. Cheer. I know, right?